Now I'm gonna talk about how to present a vector in 3D using the Cartesian notation. So before I'm starting to talk about that, let's talk about the right hand axis. And the right hand axis just tell you if you put your four fingers along the X axis and then curly toward the Y axis, then your thumb shows the Z vector. So for example here, if I draw, that's gonna be X axis, that's going to be y axis, it's going to be z axis. So if I put my forefinger the, along with the x and rotate it toward the y, rotate it toward the y, then my thumb shows the direction of the z. So it's a right angle um, uh, coordinate system, so x, y, and z. Now, I assume in this uh, coordinate system we have, you are going to have. Um, example we are going to have the vector um, <coughs> let's call it F vector F and in 3D so that's the F we have and now we want to see its projection so its projection on the gonna be F Z and it's gonna be F in X it's gonna be F in Y direction. So when we want to find the when we want to find either of these um, uh, uh, component, we can say that we can write the that vector the f is going to be it's going to be f x in i plus f y in j plus f z in k. So that's how we are writing it. It's just the same as the 2D. You just have the K here, which is similar to I and J, which was the unit vector along the X and Y axis. The K is just the unit vector along the Z axis. And we are going to write it like that. Now how we are going to find these uh, uh, F, uh, Fx, Fy, and Fc, the, the component of uh, what we have along each of these axes that we uh, need to uh, find. So if we can see there that well, what we have to, to do that, one of the things we are going to do is that first, it's very easy that to project the F on the Z axis. If you have the angle here, if you have this angle here, so you can easily say that F sub Z, and I write it along here. So F sub z is just f cosine gamma. It's as simple as that. But projecting the f on the x and y is not that simple. So you cannot do it directly. So what we are doing that first we are gonna project it on this x and y plane, and then so when we project it on x and y plane, it's gonna be gives us f x and y. And then we use that f x and y to project it on uh, x and y uh, axis. So if I want to write that, so again the f x is just simply f. Sorry, the f z, the most simple one, is the f cosine gamma. Now the f z. The f x y. If I want to project the f on the x y, it's gonna be f sine gamma. Sorry, so it's gonna be f sine gamma. So it's projected to z if f cosine, and on the x y z it's gonna be sine gamma. Now I can project this on the x and y axis. So for the x one, it's gonna be f x is going to be 
if sine gamma, which is this vector, and then we can project it onto this axis, or, to, or assume it here we are called this theta. So it's fx f sine gamma cosine theta, and then fy is going to be f sine gamma sine theta. So this is how we are going to find the uh, x component. So the z component, you can find it directly. The x component, you probably need, and the y component, the same. You probably need to project it on the x, y uh, plane, and then get the x and y component of them. Similar to what uh, to, to the 2D uh, calculation, the magnitude of f is going to be just squared all the component and take the square root. So it's going to be fx squared plus fy squared plus z squared and then the square root of that is its magnitude. But when it comes to the angle, the angle is probably not that easy to find. So if you want to find the angle between each of these three uh, axes, uh, it's not like that straightforward that we had before. Now let's uh, see if I can show them here on this axis. So this is a gamma. So the gamma is between F and Z. And we are going to have uh, alpha, which is between f and x so it's going to be alpha is between f and x and it's going to be beta which is going to be between f and y axis so it's going to be in each of these direction so to find these three components we are going to say that cosine alpha is f x or f is magnitude and the same cosine beta is f y over f and cosine gamma is f z over f so this is how we find the direction eventually we're going to take the uh, mm, cosine inverse to get the alpha beta and gamma this is how we are going to get the angle of that between x and y and z. The bearer in 2D, we just define y and one angle. Here, we have to define three angles between each of three axes. So that's the magnitude, and that is the direction of uh, our vector. So we want to write it in Cartesian uh, form. One other uh, um, component that's going to be really helpful later on when we are working with uh, that is the unit vector. You remember we have the i, j, and chi, the, uni, the k, the unit vector along x, y, and z. Now, what about having a unit vector along the f? So I have the unit vector along the f. So u is the unit vector, its magnitude is 1, and it's along the f. So how we find that uh, vector? So u is, if you want to find u, you just, you can, to find that, you just divide the vector by its magnitude. That's how we are going to get that vector. It's very simple. So it's going to be fx divided by fi plus fy divided by fj plus fz divided by f k so this is the unit vector this is the vector that is that has a magnitude of one and is in direction of that vector now look at here and compare it with these three equation so we have fx over f here and this fx over f here so this is cosine alpha the same here, we have Fy over F here, and it's a cosine beta, we have Fy over F here, and Fz over F here, Fz over F here. So, with this, using these two sets of equations, we can rewrite that U can be also write as cosine alpha I plus cosine beta J plus cosine gamma K. 
So you can either write it this way or that way and it's much easier to find the alpha, beta, gamma from this equation. So how we do that? First we calculate the u vector from there, from that equation and then each of these components gives off one of the angle with the x, y, and z. So to find the angle, still we can use this, but most of the time it's easier to go this way. Calculate the uh, unit vector along that vector, and then the i component gives you cosine alpha, the j component is cosine beta, and the k component is cosine alpha. You can get alpha, beta, gamma. Uh, from there. And let's look at an example to see how we can um, uh, use the uh, Cartesian notation to represent the vector in 3D uh, domain. So, same thing, assume we have the right hand coordinate system, which is going to be z, y, and x. So it's x, y, and z and assume we have a vector like that which is 100 newton and if I project it down here on the xy axis it's going to give us uh, 60 degrees between these two and 30 degrees here and want to uh, find it and uh, write that f in Cartesian format so Again, if we, we need to find the fz, f1, and fx. So the fz, that's going to be our fz, and that's going to be fx, fy, that's going to be fx. We want to find fx, fy, and fz to represent our vector. Remember that, so this is the 60 degrees that we have uh, here, so Fz is just the easy one, Fz is, we have the 60 degrees on this side, so it's going to be, Fz is going to be F sine 30, uh, sine 60. Because this is 60 degree on this side and it's going to be 30 degree on the other side so it's a sine 60 rather than cosine 60 or if it's, if you find it easier than we can say this is 30 degrees because this is 60 so that's going to be 30 degrees so it's going to be f um, cosine 30 either way that's easier for you to work with that um, and the magnitude of that is going to be 86.6 Again, because this is 60 degrees, 30 degrees there, so I'm projecting in that one. So either it will be on sine 60 or cosine 30. So both of them are the same. Now when we want to calculate the fx and fy, first we have to project it on the xy plane. Assume we call this fxy. So fxy is going to be f cosine 60. This is the f and the 60, so f cosine 60, and it's gonna give us 50 newton. Now to calculate the fx and fy, I'm gonna project it on these two. So I have fy. Or let's calculate the fx first. So we have fx is gonna be fxy. Fxy. And is the 30 degrees there, so it's going to be sine, not cosine, because it's sine, the, ter the angle is there. So it's going to be sine 30, which 
going to be 25 newton and for y it's going to be f x y and the 30 degrees is there so it's going to be cosine when we project it on the f y so the cosine 30 degrees and it gives us 43.3 uh, for x and y and z so i very <coughs> quickly just give that uh, because it sometimes might uh, cause confusion so if you have f and this is the theta so this is going to be f cosine theta and it's going to be f sine theta but if you have f and then you have for example assume this one is uh, say alpha then f is going to be because it's on the other side it's going to be f <coughs> sine alpha and this one is going to be f cosine alpha so make sure that you are not getting confused about where the angle is so always uh, for the one that's close to the angle we use the cosine like here or here and for the one that is far away from the angle we use the sine like here it, it said same thing happened here what uh, I've done for the calculation so we calculate the uh, fx fy and fc so we have all three component of our uh, vector now I'm going to show how we write it in the 3d so f it just is x component which is the 25 i plus y component 43.3 j plus its z component which is 86.6 k its magnitude just add all the component uh, add all the square of component and the square root so it's so 25 squared plus 43.3 squared plus 86.6 squared and then a square root of that which eventually gives us and should give us exactly what we have at this side so it's going to be 100 newton so it's a double check that we did all the calculation right because we from the beginning we knew that is 100 degrees and to calculate the angles, as I said, that it's easier to use the uh, unit vector to calculate the uh, angle. So the unit vector is going to be f divided by its magnitude, which is going to be 25 divided by 100 i plus 43.3 divided by 100 j plus again 86.6 divided by 100 k so it's our u max is our and we know that also that the u is cosine alpha i plus cosine beta j plus cosine gamma k so if you look at that this way um, So this one is cosine alpha, this one is cosine beta, and this one is cosine gamma. So I write it for uh, cosine alpha, so that, that the cosine alpha is going to be 2500, then alpha is going to be cosine inverse of 25 over 100, which is going to be 75.52 degrees the same cosine beta is 43.3 over 100 and it gives us the beta is 64.34 degrees and cosine gamma is 86.6 over 100 
and the comma would be 30 degrees which we had it this is the comma here and we know at the beginning that it was 30 degrees so if you see that's how we do the calculation in Cartesian method so when we have the vector in the 3d find the fx fy and fz is three component write it as a vector as a vector of, uh, as a i and j and k then you can find its magnitude you can find the uh, unit vector and from there you can get also the angles for the Cartesian method